Jean Marshall. Sleep seems like a simple human right, does it not? Like eating and clothing the body. If you were hungry and came to me for food, would I hesitate to give it to you? Of course not. If you had nothing to wear, would I not give you something of my own? Certainly I would. But if you needed sleep, a few hours of precious oblivion, how could I help you? I couldn't. You are an insomniac, and there is nothing I can do about it. Empty your mind. Relax. Count to a hundred. Count to a thousand. Count to a million. Lie on your back. And lie in your stomach. Try your right side now, the left side. Let go. I'm right back where I started. And I'm wide awake. Our mystery drama, Insomnia, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Terry Keene. I'll return shortly with Act One. Weekdays on C. As far as I know, there is no prescription for insomnia, prolonged and tortuous wakefulness. If you are affected with it, with insomnia, you have my sympathy. If you are not, my congratulations. There is really nothing more to be said on the subject, but stay with me while the story called Insomnia unfolds. One two. clock struck four and stopped. I heard it strike three. I heard two. I heard one. I heard twelve. I kind of liked twelve. Went on for quite a while. But just as I was getting friendly with it, it stopped. There then ensued silence. Total silence. The absolute, complete absence of sound. It's all around me, that silence. There's nothing in this room but silence. And me. Me, smack dab in the middle of silence. I uh, can't endure one more second. Come here, you. Not one more second of this. Silence. Oh, come on, Bill. Pick up your phone. Oh, at last. Hello. Hello, Bill. Who is this? Yes. What? Listen, I'm sorry to wake you up. Hey, who is this? It's your mother, Bill. Mom? The very same. Well, what's up? Is something wrong? Hey, nothing wrong. It, it, it's my mother. Oh, what'd you say, Mom? Who are you talking to? Oh, Phyllis. You wanted to know who I was talking to. You, you woke her up, too, you know. Well, I'm sorry. Hey, uh, what, what time is it, anyway? It's three minutes past four in the morning. What is it? What's the trouble? I can't sleep. <sighs> but, Mom, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Oh, it's just... just so quiet here. You have no idea how well, it's quiet... it's quiet here, too. It was until the phone rang. Uh, Bill, it, uh, tell Phyllis I'm sorry. I went to bed at 11.30, and I've just been lying here ever since, listening to the silence. And it's getting louder and louder. Uh, silence. And it's starting to deafen me. Now, uh, listen, Mom, you got a pill you could take? A pill? Yeah. No, I haven't got a pill, and I wouldn't take one if I had one. Oh, no, just this one. There is no such thing as just this once with pills. You take one, you're hooked for life. Well, Necessarily. Yes, necessarily. I'm surprised you don't know that. Yeah, I do. Anyway, but... even if I had one, if I was willing to take it, I have to get up at seven o'clock to get to the bookstore by nine. So, what good would a pill do, even if I had it? And even if I I would take it, which I haven't, and I wouldn't. But mom, mom, I don't know what you want me to do about it. Oh, uh, hmm. Nothing, I guess. I have to get up at seven too, you know. I know, I know, and I am sorry. I just thought. Uh, 
I just thought maybe the sound of a human voice might help. Well, isn't there somebody else you could call? Some friend, maybe? Uh, well, there... They wouldn't be a friend anymore if I called them at ten minutes past four in the morning. Well, gee, Mom, I... Oh, wait, uh... Wait a minute. You're giving me an idea. Yeah? There's Mrs. Corey. Who's Mrs. Corey? Oh, she lives next door. They moved in a couple of weeks ago. Do you know her? Uh, no, I don't know her. Well, what makes you think you... Well, she cleans her house at night. She what? She cleans her house at night. I've seen her vacuuming and dusting, running the washer-dryer even. I, I don't know what she does in the daytime, but at night she cleans. So, I could call her, uh, ask her if I can come over and uh, help her clean. <laughs> I know what. I won't call her. I'll just go over there and I'll ring the bell. I'll tell her I can't sleep and ask her if I can wax her floor. Uh, thanks for the suggestion, Bill. And uh, tell Phyllis I'm sorry I woke her up. Uh, Mrs. Corey, my name is Anita Dwyer and I live next door to you. The White House with the big maple out front. I couldn't help but notice that you were uh, cleaning your house. I thought maybe I could give you a hand. Please, Mrs. Corey. My name is Anita Dwyer, and I can't sleep. Oh, M Mrs. Corey? Yeah, I'm Mrs. Corey. Um, Mrs. Corey, <laughs> have you ever had insomnia? Uh -huh. A night after not, not being able to sleep, has that ever happened to you? Well, no, no, I didn't say that it has. Well, it has to me, and it's terrible. Oh, well, I'm, I'm awfully sorry, but I don't. I'm, my name is Anita Dwyer. I live next door to you. Oh, oh, yeah. And since you moved in, I couldn't help noticing that you clean your house at night. Oh, well, my husband works nights. It's the only chance I get. Oh, oh. Well, I should have thought of that. Oh, uh, do you want to come in for a minute? Could I? Oh, oh. Uh, careful of the cat. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't want her to get out. Oh, yes, the cat. <laughs> She's supposed to stay in the house. See, when she gets out, it takes hours to find her. Uh -huh. Oh, sit down, please. I'm, I'm sorry about your insomnia. Gee, that must be awful. Oh, it is, really. It's, uh, you know, the silence, mm. the stillness that gets to me. I went to bed at 11.30, and the silence was just like a big cloud hanging over me. It was a big black cloud. And finally, a few minutes ago, I called my son. It was a terrible thing to do. I mean, not only did I wake him up, I woke up Phyllis. That's my daughter-in-law. I don't know if she'll ever forgive me. Oh, I'm sure she will. Well, if she's ever had insomnia, she will, but I don't think she has. <laughs> she's not the type. Isn't oh, there a type? Oh, uh, I don't know. I haven't gone into the subject deeply, but uh, well, she's got a husband, my son, Bill. Oh, uh, you, you you don't have a husband? I did. Uh, I don't know. Oh, well, I, I suppose that's why you can't sleep. Yes, I suppose it is. But right now, it's the silence that I just can't stand. Well, why, why did you turn on the radio? What, the radio? Yeah, lots of people turn on the radio. They leave it on all night, you know, for company. Do they really? Sure. I mean, I've never done it myself, personally, but I know several people who do. I mean, women especially. You know, women who are... Alone. Oh, well, I might try that. You see, whenever you wake up, there's a voice or some music or something. Oh, not just that awful silence. Yeah, even if what you hear isn't particularly interesting, still it's something. Oh, it's a sound. That's the idea. <laughs> or so they tell me. But uh, you and your husband, I suppose, you sleep in the daytime? Oh, you see, when he comes home, we have dinner. At six o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Oh. And I ought to be starting it about now. Oh, you want me to leave? No, 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 no. I still have time. Please, stay a while. Oh, that's awfully nice of you. Did I tell you my name? I'm Anita Dwyer. Oh, I'm Sheila Corey. Oh, Sheila. Oh, that's pretty. I knew the Corey part from your mailbox. Oh, oh you're very observant. Mm -hmm. Maybe I am. Uh, ever since... Well, I take a great interest in, uh, in other people's lives. I wouldn't have disturbed you if I'd thought you were sleeping. Oh, no, really, it's all right. Though I did call my son. Yeah. He's all grown up now. 27 and married. Mm -hmm. Children? Not yet. Oh, <laughs> people always say that, don't they? Not yet. Mm -hmm. As if they were holding their breath till it happened, till the child appeared. Well, maybe they are. Maybe. 
some people. I didn't. I just got married and had a child. Because that's what was expected. By whom? What? I mean, who, who expected it? Oh, well, everybody. I mean, it's what every woman did. If she was a real woman, it's what my mother did and her mother. Oh, and were they the ones who expected it of you? Um, I guess so, yes. Yes, come to think of it, it's, uh, they were. Do you have any children? No. No, my husband and I thought a child might come between us. You know, I've never heard anyone say that before. You must love each other a lot. We do. That's wonderful. Yes, it is. Oh, look, I ought to be going if I'm going to get any sleep at all. I have to be up at 7 to get to the bookstore where I work. It opens at 9, so I'll... Well, come back again sometime. I will. Thank you. And I can hardly wait to try that trick with the radio. Oh... Oh, I forgot. The radio is broken. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, Charles was going to take it to be fixed, but then... Oh, look, I I have a little transistor. Would you like to borrow it? Oh, oh, could I? Yeah, it's right here in my pocket. Sometimes I play it while I'm working. Here you are. Please take it. Oh, thank you, Sheila. Thank you. Dear little radio, sing me to sleep. Talk to me. Play to me. Just take away the silence. Break it and take it away. This is station KYRB with music for your mood. All alone. Oh. I'm so all alone. All alone. No, not that. Not that. Okay, there. I do. No. No. Oh, it isn't fair. It isn't right. I didn't do anything. It's wrong. It's all wrong. It isn't my fault. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Uh, hello? Bill, it's me. It's me. It's your mother. Mom? Bill, listen, I did what I said I was going to do, all right? I went next door where the woman uh, cleans the house at night, and she said play the radio if the silence bothers you. And she loaned me her radio, and I got into bed, and I turned it on, and there was music, station KYRB. Hey, 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 wait it's a music for your mood, the man said. And then they played all alone. And, of course, I couldn't stand that, so I reached over and turned the dial, and there was station KYRB, and they played What'll I Do? Now I'm afraid to turn it on again. Well, Mom, Mom, will you listen to me? I, I am sorry to call you and wait you. You must think I'm crazy. I think maybe you're right. Mom, shut up and listen. Okay, you listening? I'm listening. There is no such station as KYRB in this area or anywhere near. Did you hear me? There is no such station. Who was it who said, in the dark, deep night of the soul, it is always four o'clock in the morning, day after day after day? Whoever said it must have been an insomniac who has lain awake many times through four o'clock in the morning with all its attendant fears and fantasies. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Two, the best western... It's safe to say that the blessing and the comfort of sleep have been appreciated since the beginning of animate life. Certainly since mankind took to writing about himself, he has written of a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Those simple, sweet words are from the Holy Bible, Book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 33. One, two, three... The silence in me, the two of us all alone in this room and not communicating. I'm not going to stand for this. Silence, you are a rotten companion. Might as well be living with a corpse. 
course, after a while, they bury a corpse, but the silence lives on and on and on. Hello? Sheila, this is Anita. Oh, obviously you're not sleeping. May I come over? Of course. Oh, Sheila, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, come on in, Anita. Oh, thanks. Oh, I won't let the oh, cat no, out. I won't, I won't. Oh, what's the matter? The radio didn't work? Uh, it worked, sort of. It didn't get you to sleep, huh? Oh, uh, maybe I didn't know how to turn it on or tune it in. Well, it's simple. You push the on-off thing. Yeah, I did that. And then you turn the knob to whatever station you yeah, I did all that. And all I got was station KYRB playing all alone. So you turned the knob. I turned the knob and I got station KYRB playing What'll I Do? No matter what I did, I got station KYRB. I don't think I know any station like KYRB. There isn't any such station. It doesn't exist. Oh, come on, Anita. It may exist somewhere, some little town out west maybe, but if it does, you can't get it here in the east. The call letters here all start with W. Well, that's right, they do, now that you mention it. How did you figure that out? Well, I didn't. I called my son the second time in one night. I called him and woke him up, woke up his wife, too. But I was half out of my mind with all alone, and what'll I do? Maybe I'm all the way out of my mind. Do you think so? Why, no, no, I I don't think so. You, you want to know what I do think, Anita? I certainly do. I am beyond thinking. No, it, it isn't the silence. It's the solitude. What? Well, well, did your husband die or anything? As far as I'm concerned, he died and everything. Oh? Uh, we're halfway through a divorce, Charles and I. Oh, oh I see. Uh, well, you don't, but that's all right. Uh, go on with what you were saying about solitude. That interests me. Well, I think what you need is a pet. A pet? Yeah, like maybe a dog. A dog? A dog would be nice. A shaggy dog. Yeah, it could sleep by your bed or under it or... Or on it. Oh, that would be nice. Oh, but I can't. I can't have a dog. Why not? I work all day. What would the poor animal do all day while I'm at work? I can't have a dog. He'll just sleep in. All right, what about a, a cat? Cats are wonderful, and they're supposed not to care too much if you're not there all the time. Now, I, I never quite believed that, but... No, cats stare at you. They what? Well, look. Look at your cat right now. Huh? staring at me. Oh, well, that doesn't mean anything. Well, it does if you're a guilty person like me. I feel as though they're sizing me up and passing judgment against me. Oh, now, Anita. Deciding what to do with me, and it is nothing good. All right, all right. So a cat's out, a dog's out. What about a bird? A bird. Yeah, maybe a, a a canary. You could get a pretty little cage for it. You could hang it in a sunny window. Yes, I could hang it over the dressing table in my bedroom. Oh, oh, now you're talking. They're not much trouble. You just clean the cage once a day, and you give them bird seed and fresh water. Oh, oh, and a cuddle bone. Well, a, a cuddle bone? Yeah, they, they peck at it, you know, to sharpen their beaks, and it, it gives them lime and salts, which they need, and that's what I'm told. Oh, so seed, water, and a cuddle mm -hmm. bone, that sounds easy. And it'll sing like crazy. You get a canary? I'll do it on my lunch hour, and buy a pretty cage, and hang it over my dressing table. <laughs> oh, Sheila, thank you. I'll name it after you. Oh. You. This morning you were singing like an angel. When I came home from work, there you were in your cage, chirping away. Now when I most need you, it's four o'clock in the morning and I'm lonely and it's dark. You don't make a sound. Dark. Is it because it's dark that you don't sing? Well, of course, it's the daylight. It's the sun that makes you sing. Not me. You won't sing for me. 
So just huddle there in your cage while I huddle in my bed, both of us, in the dark. Come on in, Mom. Oh, I hope you don't mind. Why should I mind? Well, me coming to your office like this. I thought maybe you'd drive me home if you're ready to leave, that is. If you're not, I can take the bus. Oh, no, sure. I'll, I'll drive you home. I'm finished here. Oh, thank you, Bill. Thank you. Nothing to it. I just didn't want to go into that house alone. Are you still having trouble sleeping? Oh, you don't know. You'll never know. Anyway, I hope you'll never know. You, uh... You don't look so good. Well, thanks a lot. No, no, no. I, I mean, you look tired. Well, you'd look tired if you hadn't slept for a month. Why do you think you can't sleep? Oh, first I thought it was maybe the silence, that awful stillness. So my neighbor, Sheila Corey, she gave me her little transistor. Oh, I told you what happened with that. Yeah, you must have been hysterical. You, you couldn't have heard any station KYRB. So well, you said, and I take your word for it, but I did hear all alone, and what'll I do? You think you did. I did. I heard them. I know what I heard, for heaven's sake. You think I didn't hear what I heard? I think you heard what was in your mind. I know what I heard. I, um, I had lunch with Pop yesterday. Oh, you did? How is he? Is he by care? That's all right. He, uh, asked for you. Well, now you can tell him I asked for him. I will. Well, when I see him. Did I tell you about Sheila? Oh, yeah, the lady next door. You told me. No, no, no. I mean Sheila the bird. Oh, you didn't tell him anything about a bird, no. I bought a bird, a canary, and I named it Sheila after the lady next door because it was her idea I should have a bird. I never knew you liked birds. Well, I don't dislike them. After I bombed with the radio, Sheila decided we... Well, we sort of decided between us that it wasn't just the silence, that it was the solitude. Yeah? That was, was keeping me awake, so I should have a pet for company. That's when I bought the canary. And? Didn't work, because canaries don't sing at night. Well, I could have told you that. Probably the fool bird twittered away all day while I was at work, but at night? No. Mom, I, uh, I wish I could tell you what to do. You think I could get a job working nights? Doing what? I don't know. Anything. I mean, there must be something... Bill, do you think Phyllis would mind if I moved into that little room in the back of your house? Now, I wouldn't be there all day, and I, I could eat out. It would be just for sleeping purposes. I, uh, I, I don't know, Mom. Oh, uh, all right, all right, forget it. Forget I ever mentioned it. I'll, um, I'll, I'll talk to Phyllis. No, it. don't. It was a terrible idea. Forget it. Well, uh, come on, I'll, I'll, I'll drive you home. Uh... Fifty-seven years old, and I must be able to figure out some way to get some sleep. And I will. I will. Relax. Think happy thoughts. Let go. Oh, I've been over all that. Well, here we are. Hmm? Oh, yes. Here we are. Oh, would you like to come in? Just for a minute, I could... Show you my bird. Oh, sure. Now, I uh, can't stay long. Phyllis is expecting me home. Oh, of course, I know that. We'll just take one little peek at Sheila, and then you can trundle on home. Come on. Maybe she'll be singing. The sun hasn't set yet. When the sun's out, she sings like a... Yeah, well, like a bird. <laughs> Come on upstairs. Is that where you keep it? Mm-hmm, in my bedroom. And that's where she was supposed to keep me company so I could sleep. That was the original idea. I hung the cage by the window over my dressing table. She's very happy there, all day when I'm not home. At night, she puts her head under her wing and sleeps like a log. While I lie in my bed and listen to the silence and stare at the dark. And feel the solitude. But soon the sun comes up and starts shining through the window and she starts in on her aria. I get dressed and go to work. I'm awfully sorry, Mom. Uh, I know you are, darling. Well, there she is. Isn't that a pretty cage? Ooh, where's the bird? In the cage. Where else? Um, Mom, um, something's wrong here. 
Well, what do you mean? What can be wrong? Mom, um, there's just... Just feathers in the cage. Feathers? Mom, some cat got in and, uh... Oh. I killed your cat. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, look, I'll, no, I'll, no, I'll, no. I'll go take a look. No, don't look. Don't look. It isn't the cat's fault. It's mine. No, that's right. It's my fault. You see? I left the window open. The cat climbed up the maple tree and came in through the window and jumped on the dressing table and reached into the cage and killed the bird. That's the perfectly natural thing for a cat to do. No, see, so I'm the one. I'm the one who bought the bird and the cage and put the bird in the cage and hung it over the dressing table and left the window open. I did it. I did it. I'm a terrible, stupid person, and I do terrible, stupid things. (laughs) No wonder I can't sleep. Men have brooded on sleep for centuries. Samuel Daniel, in 1592, wrote, Sleep, son of the sable night, brother to death, in silent darkness born. Two hundred years later, Shelley wrote of death and his brother, sleep. And in the next century, Tennyson called sleep death's twin brother. What is this little death we crave so ardently and fear so much? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. If you think about sleep, you have to think about the dreams that come with sleep. Dreams are the expression of your innermost self while your mind is dormant and your critical faculties relaxed. Could we not conclude from this that far from being akin to death, sleep is the state of being most closely connected to life. Perhaps we only truly live in our dreams. The wearier I get, the less I can sleep. It's as though I've come to the end of weariness, accepted that as the normal way to be, and I plod on more tired and more tired and more... Oh, hello, Anita. Come on in. Oh, oh, please, don't let the cat out. No, I won't. Oh, sit down. You want something to eat? Oh, uh, no, thank you. And thanks for not suggesting hot milk. Oh, you tried it weeks ago. No good, huh? Nothing's any good. The canary didn't help? Canaries don't sing at night, Sheila. Oh, I never thought of that. Anyway, the canary's dead. It's dead. A cat got into the house and killed it. Not my cat. I didn't say... My cat never leaves the house. It doesn't matter what cat. It's my fault. I hung the cage over the dressing table and I left the window open and the cat, whatever cat, climbed up the maple tree, came in through the window, jumped up on the dressing table and did what came naturally. End of canary. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but... It it wasn't my cat, Anita. No, it was me. It was my fault. I did it. Bill, my son, was with me when we found it. I guess I got hysterical and he calmed me down. We talked about this... This thing. This insomnia. We decided that it was the darkness in addition to everything else that was getting to me. I mean, I close my eyes and it's dark, then my eyelids fly open and there's more darkness. So, Bill said to get a nightlight, and that's what I'm going to do. A nightlight, huh? Mm. I thought I'd get one of those votive candles, you know, like they have in churches. Oh, that, that would be pretty. I mean, it's such a nice, soft light, just enough to drive away the terrible darkness. Oh, Anita, I have a feeling it's going to work. I hope so. Oh, I hope so. There. There you are. My little nightlight. Oh, you're pretty. And so to bed. Oh. Oh, it's lovely. Now I can sleep. I know I can sleep. 
See the shadows. See the dark shadows. All different shapes and sizes. Trembling. Wavering. Oh, Lord, they frighten me. Look at that one. Tall. Thin. What is it? Who is it? What does it want? Anita. We need to talk. Charles? We need to talk, Anita. I hate people who say we need to talk. And they never say anything. Anita. I want a divorce. Oh. Well, you said something, all right. You must have seen it coming. I guess I didn't look. You must have sensed something. I didn't sense what you just said. A divorce. I didn't sense that. I'm sorry, Anita. Though there have been signs, I have to admit that. Really sorry. Those silent dinners every now and then, the urgent errands afterward, the sudden trips out of town. I'm really terribly sorry. Will you, for heaven's sake, stop saying you're sorry? That's what you say when you forget my birthday, which, incidentally, you have done for the past five years. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I mean... I'm sorry, I forgot. Sorry is not what you say when you are demanding a divorce. I am not demanding. Of course you I'm are. Asking. You know perfectly well that asking is the same as demanding. No, it isn't. With me, it is. And you knew it would be, didn't you? Well... I mean, I'm hardly the type to hang on to a man against his will. I'm sorry, Annie. Oh, I'm sorry. You just got tired of living with me, didn't you? Well... Well, of course you did. I understand that. I got tired of living with you occasionally. Really? Did you? But not to the point of asking for a divorce. Now I wish I had, since it's all going to add up to the same thing. Anita. I thought you and I would walk into the sunset together. If not precisely hand in hand, at least shoulder to shoulder. But it's not to be, is it? I'm sorry, Anita. Stop saying that. Pretty soon you'll be telling me how hard this is for you. It is hard. We've been married almost 30 years. I know that. Oh, so of course it's hard. If you're looking for pity from me, I haven't got any. I'm not. Okay. Who is she? Who? Who is she and how old? How old? Blonde or brunette? Fat or thin? Tall or short? She's not very tall. She's blonde. Oh, for heaven's sake. I, I didn't really want to know. Ask That's me. just my own special form of self-torture so I can carry her picture around in my head. Short, blonde, thin. I'm sure she's thin. Yes, yes, she is. And young. I know she's young. How old is she? 23. Well, that's young, all right. Anita, we didn't mean to hurt you. It just happened. We, we, we fell in love. We, we, we didn't mean to. It just happened. Stop it. Will you please stop it? If there's one thing worse than I'm sorry, it's, it's just happened. I don't know what you want me to say. I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to get out. Get out of my sight. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone with a life I don't know what to do with. If that's what you want. It's then. not what I want. It's what I'm stuck with. I'm sorry. Terrible sorry. sorry. That's how it happened. And here I am, in the silence, in the solitude, in the dark, with shadows. Just sit here next to your crib and maybe sing you a little song. 
Would you like that? Sure you would. <laughs> Rock a fly, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will uh, uh, Oh, what is... What, oh, it's a phone. Phone. Oh, uh, hello? Mom? Uh, who's this? What's me? It's Bill. Oh, Bill. You all right? I'm all right. Well, you sound funny. Uh, I was asleep when the phone rang. Asleep? It's only 10 o'clock. Really? Well, it never entered my head you'd be asleep at 10 o'clock. But never entered mine either. Well, look, I'd never have phoned if I thought that you were asleep. Uh, uh, did you want something, Bill? Uh, yeah, yeah, I wanted to come over and see you, but if you're sleeping, I, I wouldn't want to. No, that's all right. Come on over if you want to. But if you're sleeping... It's all right, really. It's all right. Come on over. Me? I? I was asleep at 10 o'clock. I can't believe it. It's impossible. I must have been absolutely exhausted. That must have been it. But I don't think that was it. There was something else. I was... I was thinking about Charles. I was remembering. And I think I was crying. I know I was crying. I remember crying a lot. And then I heard something. I saw something. And then there was somebody, somebody who... Who did what? Oh, oh, that's Bill. It was Bill calling that woke me up. Mom, I'm so sorry I woke you up. No, no, it's all right. Don't give it another thought. Come on in. I never would have phoned if I'd thought you... Come, sit down. Imagine you being asleep at 10 o'clock. It's amazing, isn't it? After all these weeks. Well, I guess the old insomnia has come to an end. It looks like it. Just had to run its course, I guess. I guess so. So, what did you want to see me about, Bill? I, uh... I really wanted to apologize. Apologize? Apologize for what? For the way I talked to you the other day. I don't remember you saying anything you need to apologize for. Remember when you asked me, could you sleep in that little room at the back of the house? Oh, that... I think I kind of brushed you off. Oh, well, I don't know. You said you'd have to talk to Phyllis about it. That's only natural. I mean, who wants a mother moving in or a mother-in-law? Nobody. That's who. That, uh, that wasn't the reason. Anyhow, I wouldn't have done it. The reason was, uh, well, Phyllis is going to have a baby. A baby? Phyllis is going to have a baby? Yeah, and I wasn't absolutely certain when I talked to you. Oh. As, as a matter of fact, Phyllis was seeing the doctor the same day. Phil, that's so wonderful. I'm so pleased. <laughs> You'll be a grandmother. I know. Uh, you uh, you don't mind? Mind? Why should I mind? Well, that little room will be the baby's room. Of course, of course it will. Otherwise, we'd have been glad to have you use it. You I know. wouldn't have done it anyway. It was just that I couldn't sleep. Well, and, and now you can. You know what? I will be your babysitter. We hope so. <laughs> uh, not that we'll want to impose on you. Impose? Impose? Oh, that's not imposing. Eh, you never know. And you and Phyllis can go out wherever you want, and I'll come over and be with the baby. And if it cries... You'll pick it up. <laughs> I know you will. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but I will. Go into that little back room, and I'll say, Well, now... What's the matter here? What's the matter with the precious baby? Can't you go to sleep, sweetheart? And then I'll sit down on a little chair and I'll sing a little song like uh, rock a baby in the treetop. And pretty soon that baby will be sound asleep. <laughs> you want a bet? Is that uh, what you used to do with me, sing Rockabye Baby? Did I? Let me see, I can't remember. I'll bet you did. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Oh, you know what I did? 
I sang Hut Sut Ralston on the Rilla Rock. That's what I sang, and you just loved it. Hut Hut It was a very popular song of the day. Hut Sut Ralston on the Rilla Rock, and a brawl, a brawl, a sewage. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Your father thought it was terrible. Not his idea of a lullaby, but it put you to sleep. Um, speaking of my father, uh... What about him? I had lunch with him today. Oh, did you? Mom, I don't think he's very happy. Really? Yeah, this this chick he's got. A uh, short, blonde, young? Mm, too young. Oh? She jogs, plays tennis, soccer. Soccer? Yeah, it's wearing him out. <laughs> I don't wonder. Soccer? Mom, he can't take it. Well, she's what he wanted. Well, not anymore, I don't think. Is that so? I think he'd, um... I think he'd like to come back, Mom. You don't say. He sort of hinted around about it. No kidding. I think he wanted me to find out how you'd feel about it. About his coming back here? Yeah. I'll, uh, probably be seeing him again next week. What should I tell him? Um, tell him... Tell him I'll think about it. Silence, solitude, darkness. These are the fears of infancy, and they can combine to produce a morbid anxiety. Strangely enough, they can reappear many, many years later when one is alone, and there is no light, and there is no sound. I'll be back shortly. On CBS Television. Reach for the stars. A little light, a presence, a human sound. Simple things, are they not? Having nothing at all to do with power or position or affluence. Simple things an infant needs to sleep. And adults too. Because somewhere in the deepest recesses of our minds... All of us are only grown-up babies. Our cast included Terry Keene, Russell Horton, and Carol Titel. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. The name is Delva. Uh, who? Delva, I think. Well, does he have a first name? Probably, but I don't know it. Huh? Could save a lot of time if I had a reference point. He has a daughter named Arlene. That's all right. Let's see if that singles him out. Well, we got him. Uh, what do you want to know? First, does he have a criminal record? Let's ask. Stand by. What for? Charge watch. Head hunting. Did I hear that right? Head hunting? That's exactly what you heard. Head hunting. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
This is WROW AM and FM, Albany. The time is two minutes before midnight, and here's a recap of Wednesday's news. U.S. officials said a reconnaissance plane flying in international airspace... Was